just to see. So it says the diagram below shows three triangles, X, Y, and Z. So we're looking at these three triangles here, X, Y, and Z, right? Um, the first question says that, that, let me just go for it quickly so you can see quickly. Um, so here's the first question. Triangle down here, it says triangle X is mapped onto triangle Y by a reflection. So X is mapped onto Y by a reflection. State the equation of the mirror line. We're talking about mirror line. So we are observing um, X and we were observing Y, all right? Do the equation of the mirror line. First, we have to understand how the reflection works, all right? So um, looking at X and looking at Y, um, we do know that the object, so this is the object here. All right, so let's, let's just write O for object here. Right? This is object and this is I for my image. The question is, is when, we, when we're dealing with a reflection, we do understand that the object and the image will be equal in distances from the mirror line, right? That's, that's one of the things we could look at. And if you really look at this, you're seeing that this line here would be the center. <laughs> so this is the mirror line here, right? Because these points are equal in distances from this straight line here that we call the x-axis. But the question says the equation, right? So what is the equation when you're dealing with the x-axis? What is the equation? It is, it is where y is equal to zero. So, so this is where y is equal to zero. And um, so that would have been the response that we want to look at. Y is equal to zero because you could see that it's dead half this point from that point, this point here from this point here. So, and if you count from this point to here, we'll get four units. And if we count from here to the matching or corresponding point, we'll get four units. So definitely um, Y equals zero, which is the X axis is the mirror line. So that's what I would have written down here. Y is equal to zero. That is the same thing as the x-axis. But, all right, describe fully the transformation with, which maps triangle x onto triangle z. So we're talking about what change x to z. So we're gonna describe that like it. X, so we're talking about x here going across to z here, right? Um, definitely. Uh, we could see we could see the, the concept of a rotation going on right here center and i'm seeing look at this look at this 90 degrees here because this direction is an anti-clockwise rotation anti-clockwise counterclockwise 90 degrees counterclockwise rotation about the origin right here right and um another thing about 90 degrees rotation is that uh an, a, a vertical an horizontal line turns vertical you could see that. Look at look at this line segment here. It's matched to this, so that's another clue that helps you to understand um, ninety degrees rotation, which is the same thing as two seventy in the other direction. That is that we are looking at a rotation of ninety degrees in an anticlockwise direction about the center zero zero. Right. So we 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 can ninety degrees rotation all right and anti-clockwise yeah i could have said it differently anyway in an anti-clockwise direction with center Zero zero. I collected the two marks to navigate this sort of. Okay, so the next question says um, here it says on the diagram on page ten, which is this diagram here, um, translate translate triangle Y using the vector negative seven one. All right, remember um, what when we're dealing with um, translation and so forth. Um, firstly, we have to move horizontally before we could move vertically, right? And the thing is, when you go to the left, it's a negative movement. 
If you go to the right, it's a positive movement. If you go up, it's positive. If you go down, that's negative. So when we get negative seven, we're gonna go to the left seven units and we're gonna go positive one, we're gonna go up one. So we're gonna combine that. Remember though, that we're dealing with, um, we're moving triangle Y. And when we're done, we're gonna label it V. All right, so triangle Y right here. So in translating, we're gonna translate all the points um, the same way. So thinking about it, we're gonna move this. We're gonna move it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then up. So that point landed there. This one, we're gonna move one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we'll move up, landed there. This point here, we're gonna move one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then go up. That point landed right there. So we're gonna recreate the shape. Let me use another marker. There. I'm not using a straight line PC with me, but I'm just saying we label that that V. So basically we translated that. So it's like we shift it to that and then seven units and then push it up by one unit and we get this shape down here. All right, so that's, that's the bottom line for that. So the next question says, guess what? On, on the same diagram, enlarge X at the center zero, zero by using a scale factor of a half. What a scale factor of a half means is that it's gonna, you could, so we're gonna enlarge this and it's, it's, it's a dilation. Enlarge does not necessarily mean to get bigger. Um, the concept is dilation, all right? So when we have a scale factor of, um, a scale factor of a half, it means that everything will be reduced. It's good. So we're gonna have a diminished shape here. Um, so because the center is zero, zero, Luckily for us, whenever the center is zero, zero, what happened is that the, the coordinates can be, um, you could have all the coordinates. For example, this coordinate is zero, two, it's gonna be at zero, one. This coordinate here at four, four, it's gonna be at two, two, because taking half. And this coordinate here at six, two, it's gonna be at three, one right here. So then, if, if I should just recreate this with my free hand, see with me, then we'll get back that, we'll get that, and we will get that. So basically, this would have been the, the using a scale factor of a half, then it's gonna diminish, and we're gonna get this, all right? So this is what, and um, where do I get the coordinates? Remember, you could just easily read this. This is zero, two, and then it's gonna to turn to zero, one. Um, this is four, four, and it's gonna to turn to two, two. And this was six, two, and it's gonna to turn to three, one. So I'm saying because the, the center of the enlargement is at zero, zero, and um, we can manipulate the coordinates with the scale factor. Hence, that's the result. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, drop a comment. Thank you.